Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Transformation Time. Every Thursday I host an episode of either Transformation Time or Re Behind the Scenes. My name is Diana Lizarazzo and today's guest speaker is Elizabeth Kelly. Now before we get started, I want to share some exciting news with you. I have created a social networking platform called ReFab that you guys are going to love and want to be a part of. This platform helps real estate investors, mentors, and professionals to be able to create credibility and trust in the communities and to become more visible, to become searchable. So if you guys are interested in that, if you guys are ready to level up, then you have to check out the platform. It is called ReFam. The link is Real Estate Investor Fam, F-A-M, realestateinvestorfam.com. Hope to see you guys there. Now back to the show. On Transformation Time, our guest speakers are real estate investors, and they're here to help you by sharing their personal development journeys and mindset shifts they've gone through to get to where they are today. And we'll also get a sneak peek into what they're doing right now to get to those future big, big goals. So it's really exciting. And let's see if Elizabeth is here. Let's just uh, check. Okay, we're waiting on Elizabeth. Well, we'll wait for her to come join us. Let me know what type of real estate investor are you? Or are you a mentor in real estate investing? Or are you a professional? Like professionals are lawyers, accountants, contractors. There's so many different people that investors need to work with to get their power team in. So I'd love to hear, let me know, you know, what kind of, what kind of person you are, if you're an investor, if you're a professional, um, or if you're a mentor and I think Elizabeth is on, so let's get her on, but yeah, let it, let me know, uh, what kind of, what, oh, it's a lot of fun. Oh, oh, I see. Hold on. Elizabeth is coming in in a different way. Okay. There you go. It's fun when you have many accounts. <laughs> Let me know if um, you, you see. Oh, there we go. Hey, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for coming on. I'm excited, so excited to hear about your journey. Oh, oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your um, your podcast. I love what you're doing. Oh, thank you, thank you. So. Let's start with just telling the viewers a little bit about yourself. What are your real estate strategies? You know, what do you do in the industry? Anything you'd like to share, your experience, whatever you'd love to share. Sure, thank you. Um, so I've been investing for a long time, about 20 years. So I've done most of the strategies out there. Uh, I would say my specialty is probably multifamily and rent to owns. Um, although I have done some wholesaling, I've done lots of joint ventures, some capital raising, a whole bunch of different things. Um, my specialty right now, or what I'm focusing on and really passionate about right now, is uh, bringing back my commercial property. So I have a building in Northern Ontario, Kirkland Lake to be specific, and we didn't do too well during COVID. We had some real challenges with uh, income and um keeping the building full with residents and tenants. So I have been focusing, probably I'd say the last eight months, I've been really intensively focusing on the building and bringing the income back, in, back up and looking at the spaces in the building and figuring out how to repurpose them or change their usage into something that makes more sense moving forward in the long run. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, that's awesome. And so now what even got you into real estate investing? <laughs> My husband. <laughs> it's, all, it's all his fault. Um, so I was, my dad was an accountant, super conservative. You know, I was always taught that, you know, you go to school and you get a degree and then you work at a job for 40 years and then you retire and then that was it. Um, but my husband has always been very entrepreneurial and he's always been very, uh, he's a real self-starter. 
So when we were working and he says, you know, I think we should buy some investment properties to save for our retirement. And so we bought a couple of pre-construction condos and then, um, and then he went to a rich dad seminar, the two hour preview session. And he's like, Oh, this is what we need to do. <laughs> so we educated ourselves. We learned more about real estate and by 20. 14, 2012 or 2014, he had left his job and we were doing real estate, both of us full time. Um, so we opened a property management company in Northern Ontario. We had owned a whole bunch of apartment buildings. We were doing rent to owns and things were amazing. But when COVID hit, we kind of looked at each other and we went, we're really busy. Like we have very little time. We haven't had a vacation in years. All we do is work. And we kind of went, you know, this is the opportunity. We're in our mid forties now. Now we have the opportunity to decide whether this is really what we want, because our vision was always to have somebody else manage the properties. We just check on them every couple of months and to be kind of passive and hands off. And I think like a lot of real estate investors, we discovered that um, what you envision and what happens in reality quite often is very different. <laughs> so we decided to take the opportunity after COVID to kind of pivot and revisit everything that we were doing and decide what was working for us and what wasn't. So we made the decision to sell off a bunch of our properties and to close our property management company. And now we're moving forward in different directions than we were, but I think we're much happier and much more fulfilled than we were feeling before. That's amazing. Uh, and it's always, and like that, there's so many things that will happen in life that help that kind of also pushes into different directions like you said that you never thought but let's go back to the past so now you're getting into real estate and you know like that i feel like when everyone's going into things they're kind of scared and they're just like oh i don't know anything about real estate so i love talking about you know the skills that you had like what kind of skills did you have that helped you improve or go bigger in real estate well, it's funny because I, I think you really hit something that resonates for a lot of people there, Diana, which a lot of people, you know, they're hesitant to make transitions or to make the jump into real estate because they don't feel like they have. Well, you know, I don't know a lot about real estate. In actual fact, probably my biggest strength was that I had spent you know, years planning events. So I'm really detail oriented. I'm all about the systems and processes. And so for me, once I figured out, okay, this is the process you go through to buy a piece of property. All I did was turn around and create a, a process with a bunch of checklists. Mm -hmm. And then I just replicate mm -hmm. the process again and again and again. So mm -hmm. one of the things I th think that's really important to successful real estate investors is being willing to learn. And sometimes that means, you know, reaching out and asking for help. And other times it means being willing to, you know, make some mistakes or being willing to maybe look a little bit foolish, but to talk to people who've been there and done what you're wanting to do and then to be willing to ask for help. So definitely, I mean, I'm, I'm working, um, uh, I'm helping a couple of people right now with some marketing stuff and I've been the guinea pig for most of what I've learned. You know, it's, it's my buildings and, you know, okay, how do you stage a comeback on a commercial building that's really struggling? Well, might as well do it on my own and, you know, learn those lessons and then I can share what I've learned. Um, and then just being really self-aware, I think, is, is a big thing too. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody has transferable skills. Nobody is going to go into real estate and be perfect from the, the day they decide, okay, I'm going to be a real estate investor and tomorrow they're perfect and they never make a mistake. Uh, we spend a lot of time trying to avoid making mistakes because as humans, we're conditioned to avoid pain. And uh, we spend a lot of time stuck in like worry and fear and it prevents us from taking action. I think a much healthier thing, a much healthier approach is to go, I'm probably going to make a mistake. But what can I do to minimize the cost of that mistake? Who do I know who can help me? Uh, what information do I need to ensure I have in order to make the right decisions? And then be willing to invest in the people who can help you, whether it's a good accountant or a good lawyer who are going to help you set up your corporations, you know, whether it's a realtor or a coach who are going to help you, you know, find the information that you need to have in order to decide, is this the right market for me? Is this the right strategy for me? Picking the people who are going to be with you on that journey and making sure that they have the knowledge and the information that's really going to benefit you reduces the amount of mistakes you can make dramatically. Mm -hmm. 
I love that. And and I love that you said also the it's like the acceptance of things are going to happen and I feel like when you have that acceptance that it's okay, I feel like it also relieves a lot of stress because you know like nothing can be perfect mm-hmm. and you and I feel like a lot of people think things are what should happen perfectly and I don't think that's ever the case. <laughs> It's and especially like you're saying, coming into real estate, you know, I, I feel that a lot of people come in thinking that they know zero, you know, and like that, like you came in and, and like your planning, being able to plan and organize is so important to be able to get your real estate up and running and to like, if anything, minimize those kind of problems that will come up because you have a plan in order that will kind of at least put you in a, the right direction. So I love that you said that. Yeah. And and I think everybody has transferable skills that are going to be valuable. And if you, you know, make a list of the skills that you have, if you feel like you're missing some areas, then, you know, maybe you decide to take on a partner for your first deal. Maybe you decide not to be, you know, the driving force. Maybe you decide to go in and be a money partner with somebody else who already knows what they're doing and you can learn the process and the systems from them. There's a lot of different ways to acquire the information you need this isn't or it shouldn't be a competition like everybody's in competition with someone else if that's what they decide to be but if you decide the only person you're competing against is yourself and you just do want to do a better job today than you did yesterday then there should be no shame and no harm in reaching out and asking for help and support Mm -hmm. i love that i love that and so like you said that so both you and your husband are in it together how do you guys, how have you guys divided and conquered um, to become as successful as you are now? I love that you said divide and conquered, which is a really politically correct way of saying, how have you guys not killed each other after working <laughs> together for so long? <laughs> I mean, if you ask me, I'll tell you it's because I'm a saint and I'm really patient. But the truth is, it's because we both have our areas of specialty. And the same thing that attracted us to each other as partners um, initially, you know, he's super, um, he's very numbers oriented. He's an engineer and you know engineers their their brains are just a little bit different than the rest of us right so he brings a very specific skill set he's fantastic with construction and renovations and understanding how things work and breaking things down like he's a master of you know kind of the renovations and that side of it um i'm much more a people person i love people and I love to build relationships and connect. I like to understand what makes people tick. So the skill set that made us a good couple also make us good business partners. The challenge is remembering that because, you know, oil and water, strengths and weaknesses balancing can also lead to conflict. So it's about learning how to communicate effectively with your partner and respecting each other and being willing to say, you know what, this is not worth, uh, this is not worth fighting over here. I'm going to let this go. But you know what, this is my hill that I want to die on over here. This means a lot to me. And hopefully those, you know, those things that are really important to both of you are not going to be the same things because then you really have to level up your communication game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah I love that you said that and it's and it's true like exactly what you're saying right it's like usually the things that bring you together are things that because you have the opposite of the other person because um, I feel like if you're the same I don't know I, I don't think I would be able to stand another one of me <laughs> so you usually go to your opposite I think yeah. I think it's very natural but then like that those opposites I feel like is what makes you a power couple because it's like your weaknesses are their strengths and their strengths are their are your weaknesses and exactly what you're saying is really I think what makes or break things is really like the communication Mm -hmm. is being able to be able to get through a problem and and being able to accept it too like being able to communicate it and being able to actually talk it through because some people maybe are too hard-headed and it's just like my way and the highway and you're just like i don't know how well that's gonna work for you <laughs> yeah i i totally agree and i think that you know when things get really heated it really helps to bring it back to there's literally nobody else in the world who has your best interest at heart like I do um you know and and I look at them I'll be like it's you and me against the world you and me like we can have our friends and our family and our people that we love but truly there is nobody who has more alignment in their 
you know, what's best for them is going to be what's best for you too. Ideally, anyways, and, you know, recognizing that some people's relationships are complicated and those kinds of things. But, you know, in theory, nobody else is going to have greater alignment with me and wanting my success than my partner and vice versa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just like the reminder that it's not us against each other. It's us against the problem. <laughs> exactly. I think that also sometimes when it's like things are going rough. I think all of a sudden we think we're against each other, but it's like, no, we're actually against the problem. We should be working together to fix that problem. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's funny because um, I, I'm a, also a real estate coach and a lot of people, you know, will get into conversations. A lot of my clients are couples and I think I attract couples as clients because I'm in business with my, with my husband and they'll be like, Oh, sorry. You know, that ended up being, you know, relationship counseling session. Mm -hmm. And it's really actually amazing to watch two couples and how they grow when they are in business together. Not everybody can do it. And some people will give it a try for a while and they are, they are just, they're not suited for it. And, and I really think that it's important that people be honest about, you know, do they want to work with their partner? And if you are, then commit to it, lean in 110% and, you know, know that it's going to open up new aspects of your partnership and new aspects of, of, you know, your relationship as well. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think even on the other side is being okay with if your partner has no interest in being involved in it. And, but though I feel like sooner or later, once they see things happening, they, they like they see the benefits, they do start wanting to get into it. But I think it's also like some people really force their partners to be a part of the part of the real estate journey. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're happy like not to and happy to support you and just being like, you know, like you do your thing, mm -hmm. but then not wanting to be a part of it. So I feel like that's also something. Yeah. And and that's one of the first questions I ask typically in, in my discovery calls. You know, if I'm speaking one-on-one -on -one with someone, I'm like, do you have a partner or a spouse? Is there somebody who's in this with you? And if they say yes, then my next question is, what is that role that they're playing? Do they want to know nothing about it and they're just letting you go do your thing? Are they a cheerleader and a supporter, but they don't want to be involved? Or is there a way that we can bring them into this and at least give them the level of comfort? I mean, maybe they're not there, you know, looking for listings and running numbers every day but at least if they can kind of understand the basics and know that you know you're not out there taking a hundred thousand dollars off of the family line of credit and just blowing it you know to be able to ensure that your partner has that feeling of comfort with what you're doing even if they're not directly involved I think is a really important aspect of investing too it is infinitely harder for investors to move forward when they don't have the support of their spouse or partner than it is to even be single and and investing yeah I totally agree I think that would just be probably fights happening because you're doing something that they don't agree with yeah <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, they don't have to be involved in real estate, mm -hmm. but they definitely have to be supportive. And to be supportive, I feel like they need to at least understand what it is that you're doing. So like you said, that they're not, you know, scared that you're going to blow all their money because they have no idea what you're doing. And I yeah. love that you made that. Point. That's really great. That's very true. Oh, thanks. I I think you almost kind of have to treat them like a shareholder, like every month or whatever, you know, you're going to have a meeting with them. You're going to update them. You're going to tell them what you're working on. They need to understand. And even when, you know, it's a decision like choosing, you know, an education company or choosing a coach to work with when you're investing an amount of money in your knowledge, they want to know that you've made the right decision, that you're, you know, doing your due diligence and looking at the different options and choosing the one that makes the most sense and not the one that, you know, has high pressure sales tactics or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, I love it. Now switching a bit, I wanted to talk about the mindset shifts or the pivoting points that you've had in your life. What kind of like that mindset shifts did you have to um, go through to be able to grow to the to where you are now? Hmm. I love that question. I don't think anyone's ever asked me that question in that way. I like that. Um, so I had a number of mindset shifts. So I was originally the idea of leaving my job, you know, going to university, getting my education, doing all this work, build this career, and then turning around and leaving that job. That was 
that was a mindset shift because all of a sudden I felt like I was giving up my security and my stability and my paycheck that somebody else was giving me. Like, it's so much easier to have a job for a lot of us, right? Like we know what we're supposed to do. We know what the expectations are. We go into work and we do our job and then we get a paycheck. And being an entrepreneur is such a, such a pivot on that. <laughs> yeah. And I struggled. There were days where I woke up and I was like, I don't know what to do with myself today. And I would go clean the house and not step foot in my office because I didn't know what to do with my time when I was in there. Like, it was hard. And you're just making the cleaning the excuse. You know, like, I can't get into the office because it's too messy and it's, like, bothering me. Yeah. <laughs> like, any excuse not to work because you're just, like, terrified. You're just like, what the hell did I do? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and it's funny because I realize in hindsight, cleaning is my procrastination. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, look, I'm being productive. I'm cleaning the house. But the reality is I'm being avoidant and just using something that I can tell myself is productive. So that was a big mindset shift for me. Um, and this realizing that before you go to your next one, because I think this is a very good topic that you said, because bringing that awareness is so true because I have the same thing like I'll start I, I do cleaning or I'll do other things for example like oh I'm gonna work on my website or something when it's like that is not gonna help me in any way but like you said it's a procrastination tactic yeah. that I just don't want to do the things that I actually have to do yeah. what kind of tips do you actually have from your experience of this what kind of tips do you have for the viewers to help them one bring awareness to it and two to start removing that out of your life so that you can take the actions you need? Um, so everyone is different when it comes to kind of how to manage that. I find always the first step is awareness. So being aware that, yeah, this is what I'm doing and being able to kind of sit with those feelings and say, why am I doing this? Why, why am I not? What am I struggling with here? What is the problem? And for me, I just realized that I... When I don't know what to do, I have a tendency to just not do things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I found making a list of the things that I could be doing. And initially, you know, I would sit down with my husband at night and I'd say, okay, I really struggled today. Like, here's what I'm working on. What do you think I should do next? And just even the first couple of conversations with his ideas about what I could be doing next to move things forward was really helpful. And I, after a while, I didn't need that. And then after a while, I didn't want him telling me what to do. <laughs> so that just went in a whole different direction. I but, love that you said that, though. That is amazing because I actually, it's funny you say that. I do the same thing. I remember one time I was completely mind blocked. I was like way over stressed. So, you know, it's like when everything becomes a priority, so you yeah. get nothing done because yeah. everything is a number one to you. And I remember that uh, same thing. My husband's like so tired from work. I'm also so tired from just like everything I had to do. And I think just mental exhaustion of like the stress. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, I just need some help. And same thing, like he just, we went through like one thing very quickly and all of a sudden it just like started moving me forward and I just needed someone to like break that mental block for me. And it's just like, and he was just like, oh, I'm so tired. Like, let's talk about the rest tomorrow. I didn't even need that conversation afterwards. Yeah. I just needed that block, like open the door for yeah. me. And that's all like I needed. It was just like that initial, like, okay, the door is finally open. Like, I don't know. I was just doing this, you know, you're like, pulling the yeah. door closed but really want to open it you know and he was just like all you have to do is let your hands go and let the door open and yeah. I was just like I don't know what happened <laughs> that's such a great mental image where you're like holding onto the door and going open door open door <laughs> you're holding it closed I love that I think there's a lot of different things that can get people past that I think bringing in an outside perspective is a fantastic one um, <clears throat> I think another thing that can be really helpful is movement like physically moving your body if you are stuck mentally then go for a walk do some yoga like go to the gym whatever you need to do start physically moving your body and that actually helps your brain start processing and moving through things mentally as well I think that's a great one or doing a brain dump like if you are stuck because you're so overwhelmed writing down literally everything in your head and then you can use that to create your priority list and figure out what you need to be focusing on versus the other stuff that can be done later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of different ways. But, you know, the first piece is awareness and acknowledgement that yeah. this is what I'm struggling with right now. And there's no shame yeah, in that. I love, 
Yeah, and I love that you said the, the question, right? Because it is true. You see yourself, for example, cleaning. Why am I cleaning? And you're safe because I don't want to do this. You know, you're like, damn it, I need to stop it. <laughs> so I love that. It's true because actually now you say that, I do that to myself. I'll catch myself cleaning and I talk to myself like, Diana, you are not supposed to be doing this right now. You're supposed to be doing blah, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah. and I was like, okay, okay, let me get back to work. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder if it's almost like, you know, people, I don't know if you would describe yourself as a type A personality. I'm definitely type A, highly driven. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if it's almost like kind of easing into things. Like, you know how some um, productivity management specialists say, you know, do the hardest thing first, or other people say, do a bunch of small things to give yourself some wins before you tackle the big one. I almost wonder if that's kind of what we're doing is, you know, I'm struggling over here, but if I give myself that sense of, you know, I can look around and this room was messy before and now it's tidy that mm -hmm. kind of gives us the win and the confidence to be able to move over into the other space and kind of tackle that okay I'm, I'm struggling here I'm feeling overwhelmed um, mm -hmm. I think we have mm -hmm. to listen to that story that we're telling ourselves a lot because I think we spend a lot of time telling ourselves stories and the first question should be is that the truth? Is that reality? You know, this story that I have in my head about, you know, I can't do this or I'm not good enough or this is too much or, you know, I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. Is that valid? Mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. is, that, yeah. is that something that's helpful in this situation? Because nine times out of 10, the story we're telling ourselves is not very helpful and it's not very positive. Yeah, yeah 100%. And I even love that you're saying, you know, because sometimes, like you said, maybe you just need that little win to help you and more just putting a time frame out of it, you know, like, okay, I'm going to do this for five minutes, 10 minutes, get cleaned up or get this part organized. And then now I'm going to do the work because like you said that like that maybe for me, for example, like I feel like cleaning helps me like clean my mind too. like I feel like it clears it up, you yeah. know. <laughs> And I think that that space that we're in, I love having a clean office. I love having, you know, things put away. When I look at my desk, I don't want to see papers everywhere. I don't want to see pens all over the place. I don't want to see like, you know, coffee. Co like, I don't want to see any of that. I want my space clean because then I feel like it's like a, it's almost like turning the page in a book and looking at a blank page and being like, I am ready to start this. I'm ready to start my day. 100% completely agree. Now, I know you, it seemed like you had another another one that you wanted to talk about, another mindset shift that you had gone through. Yeah, so I in 2017, um, my husband was assaulted by some of our tenants, and it led to him uh, developing PTSD. And in June of 2017, he ended up spending a week in hospital just to kind of get everything figured out to, you know, see some specialists and figure out what the next steps were. And then he didn't end up being able to work for the next six months. And when he was able to work, he came back in. He could only do 20 minutes a day to start because it was just so overwhelming and made him so anxious and triggered the PTSD. So... In that time, I was a mortgage agent and I closed up my business and I, you know, moved full time to Kirkland Lake. And here I am living here and, you know, I'm trying to run the company that we founded together that I hadn't been, you know, involved, deeply involved in, in several years. And I was so overwhelmed. I thought my husband's sick. He's in the hospital. You know, I'm trying to pick up this business that, you know, I haven't been part of in years. I don't really know what's going on. It seems like things are a mess. And I was so overwhelmed and so stressed out. And I was like, I don't think I can do this. And I went, well, if I'm not going to do it, then there's a whole bunch of people who are going to be in, like, they're going to be out of work. You know, we've got responsibilities to investors and to partners. We've got commitments. Like, I have to find the ability to do this. And that for me, you know, that digging deep and figuring out like, what do I need to do next? What is the biggest problem here? What is the next right decision? All those things developed such a sense of confidence in me and such a feeling of empowerment. Like I don't, there's not very often anymore that I go into a situation and I'm like, oh, I, I don't think I can do this or I don't know how to handle this. I find those tough experiences, those challenging times are the ones that truly show us what we're capable of. And if we had easy lives, we wouldn't know what we're capable of. 
So that was a big mindset shift for me. And now I look forward to challenges. Now I look forward to opportunities. Now I get excited by, you know, I'm going to figure out the solution to this problem. I'm going to figure out how to turn this building around or how to get out of this situation or how to, you know, achieve this goal that I've set for myself. And um, I think before maybe I kind of, you know, I, maybe I took the easy way out sometimes and I don't do that anymore. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's definitely made me that mindset shift has actually made me into a better person, but definitely a better business person and entrepreneur for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a crazy situation to have happen. And that is like, like you said, like, it's like completely changing your life around because it's like, okay, no more mortgages. And now yeah. figuring out how the hell this business is running. Yeah. <laughs> And, and like that, becoming a problem solver. Yeah. And you're right. I think it is great that you see. And I feel like sometimes in it, you feel very negative about it. But then once you're out of it and you see that you're able to just like pull it through and get it done. And like you said, you all of a sudden see like, oh, my God, like, I don't think, you know, you thought that you could never do something like that. And then when you finish, you're, it gives you that confidence of like, wow, if I could do that or like no problem, like you said, no problem is like too big and there's always a solution it just it does really really actually do, do a change in your mind it kind of makes it breaks like these barriers and these thoughts that you have about you that all of a sudden you're like oh actually i'm so i'm actually a very strong person that i can handle a lot more than you know i thought i could yeah yeah, I think or it challenges the personality of yourself, you know, like, know, like, oh, I can, I'm a very good problem solver, for example, I'm very good at this, that he didn't realize just because it, like you said, like, the opportunity never happened that that would have, like, come up. Yeah. I, I think it forces you to look at some of the stereotypes that we have too, right? And and I sort of, I had an idea what I thought being married meant and what I thought it meant to be a good wife. And I realized that, you know, what I thought meant to be a good wife, I, I wasn't happy being that person. I wasn't happy going, oh, yes, you know, you, you're my husband, you're really smart, you, you know, you're an engineer, like, you know, I was like, no. I don't agree with that decision. Here's why. I don't think we should do that. And and I really it enabled me to find my voice and really speak my my mind and speak my truth in a way that before I didn't because I kind of felt like I owed it to him. I thought being a good wife meant that you just supported whatever they said and did. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that too. That's amazing cuz I'm sure that happens with a lot of people that they think that you know, maybe what one person should be like making all the decisions to things because like you said, like, oh, it's like they're an engineer. They're so smart. They should be making the decisions, you know, <laughs> where it's just like, again, we're very opposites. You know, one person thinks in one way and you need that other side to think in a different way to actually see the different ways of doing things, because it can also just be that, you know, you could be missing great opportunities just because only one mindset is in there and they're going to, you only see with your eyes. So having mm -hmm. someone come in and look at different eyes and be like, Oh, why don't we do it this way or that way or that way? You know, can help improve things so much more. I feel like that happens a lot, even with like creative financing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think when we get stuck in our ways, then we actually limit the opportunities and the experiences we can have. And I love that you mentioned creative financing because if I presented a deal to you and five other investors and said, how would you finance that? You know, chances are experienced investors, good investors are gonna have, everybody's gonna have a different plan. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. that someone's plan is clearly right and someone's, everyone else's plans are clearly wrong. Mm -hmm. It just means mm -hmm. that our different perspectives and our knowledge base, you know, I, I'm very familiar with rent to owns. So there's lots of times when someone brings me a problem and I'm like, well, I think rent to own might be a great solution for that. If you've never done rent to own, you're not going to see the opportunity or the potential in that. And you're probably going to look at it through the lens of, you know, I do a lot of flips. So I think you should flip this property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, completely agree. That's a that's yeah, that's amazing. And any other any other mindset shifts that you wanted to discuss or pivoting big pivoting points that you wanted to discuss that's you know changed your views or seen things differently? Um, I I'm seeing 
seeing a lot of people struggling right now, a lot of investors who, you know, their mortgage payments have gotten really expensive, you know, the financing options have dwindled. And um, I feel like this isn't so much my opportunity to shift, but it's the opportunity. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. <laughs> I scared myself. <laughs> It's the opportunity for a lot of investors to um, to figure out what this next right step is for them. So if you're in a situation where, um, you know, your mortgage is up for renewal and your payments are about to triple, don't assume that going with a traditional mortgage is the only way to get through this. Don't assume that uh, what you did before is the right way to handle this moving forward. You know, reach out to the people around you. Talk to people who um, have been in that situation and, and see, you know, is there a mortgage broker or someone who can help you look at different financing opportunities? Is there a way that you can pivot and change the use of the property? Maybe there's a way that you can add some additional income to the property to help you kind of weather that storm. Uh, it's not the ideal time to sell. So I encourage you to think about the questions that you're asking yourself and then think about what are the better questions that you can ask mm -hmm. instead of it being, you know, can I, can I get a traditional financing? Maybe the question is, should I be getting traditional financing or is there something better I could or should be doing that I wasn't thinking about before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And even, even just um, the, I feel like the acknowledgement of being able to pivot and, and I think communicating with others is also very important in that sense because like that we've only, like you said, you know, a lot of us have only experienced certain different, our own experiences and talking to others will share a point of view that you've never seen that could get you to, for example, like that, a different type of financing or a different way of just doing things in general that you've never thought of. And I think the power of the community is so big and especially so important, I think, right now. Right, to be able to get through these times to find like different solutions and and just hear how other people are doing things absolutely i think this is the time to challenge yourself to say this is what everybody else is doing this is probably one of the best times in history to go how do i do things differently so that when things go back to normal i come out way far ahead like it, mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of goes back to that whole, you know, the, those sayings around, you know, if everybody's doing this, do the opposite. And there's a whole bunch of, of quotes um, that mm -hmm. sort of allude to the same thing. But this is one of those times, you know, if, if people are saying I better sell, then it's time to get out there and go, what do I need to do differently to weather this storm? And imagine yourself as a boat on a stormy sea and say, how do I stay afloat? What do I need mm -hmm. to do here? Yeah, I love that. And even I think like you said at the beginning, you know, COVID and we're now in another pivoting phase, but COVID was very much a pivoting phase where, you know, like you're saying, like your building struggling to figure out what do we do with the building because it's not performing restaurants, right? The ones that didn't go through were the ones that didn't think of like, how do you weather the COVID storm and still yeah. keep on going? You know, the people that kept on going, you know, were like you, right? Like you were thinking, okay, like, how am I going to pivot? How am I going to change? What do I need to do to still make it through this, right? In restaurants, it's the same thing. Right now, we're going through a pivoting phase. Is that what you're saying, right? It's just like, okay, now finances are incredibly expensive. Like, what can I do? How can I pivot to get through this storm and like you said not sell because it's probably not the best time it probably isn't going to benefit in any way yeah absolutely and you know there's different ways i mean you could switch to you know a form of financing maybe you paid the mortgage down a little bit um so that your principal was lower or maybe you switch to a form of financing which is interest only payments so that you're not paying down the principal and that enables you to kind of break even sometimes you know when we're in situations or even crises like this it's about it's not about you know the perfect solution right now it's about kicking the can down the road you know how do we get another 12 months to see where the market's at at that time and be able to assess and evaluate what we want to do. I think we're pretty close to the mar market bottoming out and starting to come back again. And if that's the case, then we should, in theory, be mostly through the really tough times. So if you can figure out a way to get another six or 12 months 
we should be in a better place and you should have more options at that point once things start to move on the market and you know some of the inventory that's listed right now actually becomes absorbed and um, people can actually start to sell their properties but I think there's a lot of fear out there right now is is people are afraid well maybe this isn't the bottom yeah maybe it's not the bottom but if you're buying real estate most strategies you're in it for the long term you know mm -hmm. what are the strategies that that care about the valuation in 12 months well flips do and burrs do and mm -hmm. if you're not in those spaces if you're looking at real estate as a long term it's not get rich quick it's you know get rich slow and steady if that's the way you're looking at real estate then you know if you spend a little bit too much right now and the market goes down another thirty thousand dollars but it comes back up in six months you haven't really lost anything mm -hmm. you only lose if you have to sell and you lock in that loss hundred percent i love all those tips because it's it's so true and any other tips actually i feel like you said some of them but if you have any other ones to help people kind of get over the fears because yeah you do feel the fear a lot right now with a lot of people what can people do to kind of reduce those fears that they have well i mean everybody's different but my favorite way to deal with my fear or my anxiety or my stress is information. So if and it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's something in real estate or whether it's something about my health or whether it's something about, you know, politics or news or something else, my go to response is education. So I want to know who knows who's the expert in this area, um, who does a, a great job of sharing, you know, unbiased, unfiltered information information for people to make their own determinations and decisions and I just become I go right back to being a student and I just learn as much as I possibly can about the topic and then I feel like I'm in a better position to make knowledgeable decisions because I understand things so if I'm feeling really uncertain right now about the economy and about what's going to happen then maybe what I decide to do is go back and learn some of you know the basic fundamentals of economics and I learn a little bit about you know the real estate market and what the the main drive are and then I learn hey you know what the immigration in Canada it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon and that's going to continue to be our primary driver of the real estate market so maybe I handle my feelings of anxiety about investing by going what is the number one market that new immigrants want to settle in and then I look at the feasibility of of choosing a strategy where I can buy in that market because I will have that continuous demand or the continuous um, supply of of potential tenants for my investment strategy there's a lot of things we can do to kind of mitigate risk so understanding our feelings taking action on those feelings we don't get confidence by sitting at home and doing nothing we get confidence by making decisions so mm -hmm. even if we're do, making smaller decisions like you know what five videos am I gonna watch today to learn more about the real estate market in Kitchener Waterloo those small decisions give us the confidence to keep moving forward and it's like what is the next right decision mm -hmm. i love that that's so great because that is basically at least the definitions of that i've heard of fear is basically usually the only reason why you have fear is because of lack of knowledge and you it's basically the unknown and that's why you have fears is because you just don't know what's going to happen so i love that you said that because i i also believe the same thing i think it's it's when you feel scared as you should be asking yourself what don't i know and what kind of research do i need to know to or do to know what it is that that i don't know that's giving me those fears and doubts so i love that mm -hmm. and and now so now I'm getting into your big big goals now to looking into the future and you kind of alluded to that at the beginning that you know you're in a, it sounds like you're in a pivoting state again right now and you're probably changing your goals or identifying new goals and if you do what what are the changes you're doing right now to get to your next big goals your five ten year goals and if you feel like sharing your goal feel free and always love hearing people's goals we're also <laughs> different with our goals yeah absolutely um my goals are i don't know i feel like sometimes i might be a little bit different than than other like a lot of real estate investors they have numerical goals like i want to have x amount of passive income i want to have x number of properties for me it's not about that i feel like the the money comes when you are doing something 
that you are that you love and that is your gift so for me i'm looking for um i'm looking at a couple of different projects where i'm giving back to the real estate community um <clears throat> so I, i'm continuing to do my coaching but and i can't talk about a couple of my projects that i'm working on yet but i have one right now that i'm really excited about uh, i recently met a fantastic couple they have a beautiful property in south river and they have a wonderful vision a fantastic vision um, but they need some help achieving that vision. So for me, I love to help people and the opportunity to use my marketing knowledge and my uh, event planning skills and be able to help another company, another couple achieve their goals and their vision. I'm just, I'm so excited about it. I, I'm so I'm really excited about it. And then I have a, a couple of other projects too, which I'll be able to talk about in kind of the next, uh, the next couple of months. But I'm looking for my legacy project. I'm looking for the thing that I will do that when I'm gone will make a positive impact on the world. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, I love that. I love that. And um, and talking about, because you also were talking about that you've now sold or closed up your uh, property management. Uh, what made you make those decisions to close it up and like that start a new chapter or think about even like okay we need to like to change that um i think a lot of us feel that once we make a decision that we can never change our minds mm -hmm. or that once we start doing something if we have a goal we're a failure if we stop before we achieve that goal and for me i just went I'm not happy. Like I only have a certain amount of time here on the planet and it's way too short to not be happy and to not love what I do. We were working really long hours. We were working really hard and I just went, I, I want more time with my family. You know, my, my in-laws, um, their health was declining and deteriorating. I didn't want to be trapped seven hours north of them when they needed us most so for me it was really i could keep doing this but i would be denying my own happiness if i did and there's nothing mm -hmm. more important to me not than my happiness like i don't want it at the expense of other people but when you're an entrepreneur and you have the ability to decide is am i feeling fulfilled do i feel like this is the best use of my gifts and the things that i'm passionate about and i went no mm -hmm. I, i'm not I, i'm not enjoying this anymore i i don't love what i do anymore and there's so many other things out there that i'm so excited about and after 15 years as a property manager i don't think i'm a failure for deciding to close mm -hmm. i think it was time for something new mm -hmm. And I love that you're saying that because another thing also that is so important is what you're saying. Like, if you're not 100% happy with what you're doing, you can't perform at your 100%. And it's just like, why why do something that is just going to, if anything, it degrades? Because you just, if anything, will be less, less enthusiastic about it. And then the performance, you'll see that it goes down too because it's like, if you're not happy about it, what? you know, you're not going to be able to work at your best and you want to be doing things at your best. Like you said, you know, it's like you have to do the things that make you passionate to go into work and do it because you love it. Like the project you were talking about, right? It's like it excites you. It's so much fun. And you want to always have that with what you do. And, and, in, and I think everything is phases. You know, it's like you do through it. You learn from what it is that you were supposed to learn from it. And then now you're it's like next phase, you're ready to move on to other things. Like now it's like your legacy project. What is going to be that thing that you that you're able to impact people with? Yeah, absolutely. I have uh, one of my best friends who is, you know, she works for the government and she's absolutely miserable. Like I listen to her talk and, you know, the the absolute negativity and the horrific 
you know, environment, the work environment at her job. She is so miserable. She's so unhappy. You know, she she hates going into work every day. She's got a couple of coworkers she likes, but it's absolutely toxic and this, her stress levels are off the charts. And I think, why is that better? It's the golden handcuffs, right? She goes, well, you know, there's not a lot available for what I can do. And, you know, I make good money. I have a house payment. I have kids who are, you know, in university. Like, I, I'm stuck here. I'm trapped. And I just think, what a horrible feeling to have. Yeah. I completely agree because like I was saying, you know, it's like she probably doesn't notice, but like her life is just going down so unhappy thinking that that's the only thing that she can do and isn't realizing like her health is so important to like having the whole family health also working. And I'm talking about it, so many different types of health like that. Like you have to be mentally happy with it. You do because if you're not, it will show everywhere around you too. Yeah. Yeah, that is right. I've also spoken to people and I find it really funny because I'm very similar like you where it's like if I'm not happy with something like I go on a mission to find it because it's like I'm the same like I'm just like if I have to close something down because I don't want it, I would be all over it too. I'd just be like, okay, figure it out, sell it, close it, whatever. Yeah. Like we need to end that chapter because it's just like why am I going to be miserable? And like you said, the, your life is only so, it's like, it's so short. There's only so many days you have, you know, <laughs> so many years. But it's like, it's so small when you compare it to, like, how big, like, how big everything else is, you know. And it's like, why live that in misery? And why not be doing the things you enjoy? Because, I mean, that's also what brought our success to us where we're now. It is because we are so happy and we are loving what we do and that come with that comes the success yeah absolutely it's like you with your rei fam right like you had this dream you had this vision and you know to see it come to fruition i mean i, I can't think of anything more rewarding than something that you've put you know days weeks months even years into developing and working on and then to you know kind of see this and and you know the the change and the impact on the real estate community that's so powerful mm -hmm. i i feel like mm -hmm. when we when we trap ourselves when we think small we're not sharing our gifts mm -hmm. and the things that make us uniquely us. Yeah, I completely agree. Or even like that, like you're ignoring your gifts. Maybe you don't even know you have those gifts because you're just plugging it away at the things that you're half enjoying or not even enjoying. <laughs> I completely agree with you. Any final words that you love to share with the community that about yourself or any final tips uh, um, that you'd like to give with the community? Um, I just, I'd like to encourage people to think outside the box and if they have a dream, if they have a goal, if they have a vision, you know, you don't have to go you know, all in and quit your job tomorrow and say, okay, now I'm going to do this. You know, there's ways that you can transition. There's ways that you can explore. There's people you can talk to. You can volunteer with someone for a day. You know, you can connect and, and network with new people, but life is so short. Don't stay stuck where you are if you're not happy with where you are. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to explore new options and opportunities and make new friends and develop new connections because five years from now, if you're exactly where you are, you will wish that you had these five years to start over and, and make different choices. So don't be afraid to do something different. 100%. You don't want to live with those regrets <laughs> in the future yeah. because you just never did it. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. It's always so much fun to chat with you. You always give so much great insight. If you guys love what you heard from Elizabeth, she's going to be tagged on here so you'll be able to follow her and see what she's up to. And if you guys love what you heard, if you love the shows that I have, then follow me because you'll also be able to see what other shows are coming up next. Thank you, Elizabeth. It was so much fun to chat with you. Thanks, Diana. Great to see you again. Take care. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye Elizabeth. Bye.